Hi everyone. So in this video, we will talk about how you can use Stripe Payment Gateway to take one-time payment. So let's start. So if you are following my last videos, we have uh, successfully set up product onto the Stripe and successfully added the pricing against that product. Now in this video, we will go into deep dive. How can you take one-time payment like e-commerce when uh, there is a list of product and the user is collecting a product and then uh, charging only one time, not a recurring. So let's start. We already have set up uh, like a product and uh, pricing against the product into the Stripe. Let me just show you. So this is the product with that we already have set up. So this one is Redmi Note 11S and this one so we are using these two products and we have added the pricing against that so this is the pricing that we had so now in our db we have set up one table dot product that have a product id product description product name product id first one is the price id and this one is the product price and also we have created one card so basically we are taking example of the e-commerce website where is the list of product and we are adding all the product into the card and then check it out so how you can check out that we can learn in this video so let's start. So uh, as you can see in my database, I already picked the two products. This one is the product and the second one. Let me just show you onto that screen. So we have already set up a repeating group that have a product and let me search of the product into that. So uh, as you already know, in my Stripe payment, we already have a four product, but we are only showing two products. We are just ignoring the other ones. And if you just preview it, so these are the two products that we are using. And what I have done is on the buy now, when someone click on the buy now button, we are adding a new column into the cart item table. So cart item table, if we go here, it will have a price ID and quantity. That's the two things that we require for checkout any product. It's price ID and its quantity because uh, product ID is linked to the price ID. If you go that, so this is the product. So product have a one-to-one -one relation with the price ID. So we already have a price ID and quantity set up here. Now, whenever user click on buy now button, we will just add the one row into that cart item like this. So let me just show you and let me just add it, this one or let, so if you just go to your cart item, these are the two products that we already have. Now we will move to the move to cart page. So this will lead to this page, checkout page. So what I have done is there's a list of all the cart items with their price ID and the quantity. And when you click on the make payment, we will call the Stripe API. So when you go into the checkout session, so we will create this object. So this is the post that is we are going to be set up. I already have set up the API. I will show you what how exactly it is going to work into the bubble. So if you go into the plugin, API connector, this is the checkout page. So here, uh, this is the URL. The same URL that we are passing this one. Then this is the post call. Yeah, this one. So I made that to the post one, and I'm passing the content type like this. That is application slash hw. This one, and then we are passing the other field. So first parameter is success URL. So this is the body. The body required it. This same as it is like this one. We are just copying it and just pasting it here. The first one is success URL. So what exactly it is? So this is the URL of the page that will user go once the payment successful. This is the mode. So there is a three type of thing. One is payment. One is subscription, and one more or there is there. Yeah, one more is there. Setup. So the first one that we are working on that is accept one time payment for cards, ID, and more. So basically one time payment. And the same we are doing in that particular case. Uh, second is setup. So setup is used uh, to save the payment detail, charge your customer later. It will applicable in sort of application like where coaching service are going on. You don't know how much you are going to charge that you will get to know after the call is finished. But you need that credit card details all the before starting the call. So in that case, you can set up. And subscription we will learn in the next videos. So that will use to set up a user. So we already set up mode. There's a cancel UI URL. So this is the URL that will be required whenever payment is not successful or user cancel the process. And this is the client reference ID. This is the unique ID for particular transaction. And this is the list of the product. And the interesting thing is how you are going to pass the product list. It will take. So if you go read the API, so it is how this thing is will be passed. So this is not a key. There is no such keys there. Interesting thing is there and key is item line item and this is the array so for example if you are passing a three product so that will be line item zero price then price id this is how let me just show you uh, how that will need to build we have to build this one i already uh, so this is one for the single item but for a multiple item you just need to press end and you just need to pass if you have zero you have to do one and same for the quantity you need to pass the price id of particular product that you want to check out 
and this is the quantity, how much quantity user is taking out. So this is how you will build up. Since in the bubble, there is no direct way of doing it. So we have done a pretty user clever way of doing it. So for the example sake, we have already took a price ID and a quantity. When someone click on the make payment page, we are calling a run JavaScript. So this is pretty straightforward. So you need to go first install that toolbox plugin. Then you need to fetch this element, JavaScript to bubble. So I have already done it this one javascript to bubble and i have passed that format error list as a function name and it will trigger event yes and it will publish value yes and the value type that is returning is a text because if you go into that product list here i'm just sending a text that have a array list value yeah that's an interesting thing so when you go on the uh, workflow so i'm just calling this function basically so what exactly this do this will create one array array price that will basically create the price id array list name for the quantity this will create a quantity array list and this is the text and you don't need to worry about i just copy that and you can find the link of that particular code into the description so you just need to copy paste to that thing and now what exactly i'm doing i'm using this for loop to build this sort of a text so how this sort of a text will be going to build so there is a first value an atom zero zero is basically a first position of that array that's why i'm using array it is i so if you are checking here line item i plus plus so that's how you are going to be build that sort of an array and what i'm doing that is a reverse counter whenever it equal to zero zero means my task is done i just like emit the value or basically you can say say the bubble okay this is value you need to print it so when this will things happen it will come to this and i have put a check this javascript value so this javascript bubble value is the value that emit from this code from this text so this text value will come here and i'm just triggering one custom workflow that is this one make payment i'm here i'm calling an api the same api that we are just using this one uh, check out one time product and the first thing is success url so we, so we have already set up a like a success page so that is a pretty simple that this one is there and it just say congratulations you uh, transaction success nothing fancy uh that's it let me just go back to check out page and this one this is the product list so this is a straightforward javascript value and the value come here when this function is completed this is important part you can go if you are not familiar with the code don't need to worry about it just copy paste that so this is search for the cart item fetching from the uh, database so same for you you also have a like a card uh, list and everything but if you are encoding this is pretty straightforward for you this is pretty easy for you just a simple for loop i'm just using it to merge the value of the two array that's it. so this is the value and it will come here and now whatever the output it will open it in the new url so in that api if you go here so if you see this is the output that we will get once we successfully call the stripe api so in that there is a one thing called url this one url so this is the url basically stripe return to ask to complete the process i will show you how so what i'm just doing it i'm just opening that url into the new tab that's it body url now i think you have a clear picture how we are coming to here when you click over that make payment button new page is appeared so you just this is the same uh, this process is completed and then this url is open in the new tab this is also helped by the plugin that is open in new tab no id required so there's a couple of other plugin also for that too but use this one because there is no requirement of the id path in everything it's pretty much straightforward yeah that's it so you just need to enter the email id i'm just getting to tab 5 at the rate gmail.com i'm using a test credit card it is one two three test five this is straightforward and it is processing the successful so if you are go into a payment thing and now if you check this payment is recorded this is the same payment that we have just done customer was the test file so what stripe does is so on that particular page that's where we are entering our email id and card data if any user is not we are not passing the customer id then stripe automatically create customer against particular transaction in that case they have created a customer with a test file and if you click over that it will go into the customer and this is the email id that will automate you have an option to pass that customer id also you can do that too so this is the payment succeeded and yeah so on that successful page this one it is returning the css id so this is the session id you can use that session id to fetch the complete detail of that particular session so that way you can store all if you want to create one more table uh, into your database that will store the all the successful orders then you can just use that id and then call this api this api you just need to pass the session id and that's all the information you will get. What is the ID? How, what is the object? What is the payment? Everything. This is the customer ID and this is the customer details and what the payment. Yeah, this is sufficient because 
I was testing out for the submission, but if you just copy it here and pass it here, if you go here and if you see now, the mode is payment because this works for the payment. And this is the payment intent you can use to get the further details. And this is the amount, basically this amount in a PESA. And I'm using an INR, so it is a PESA. You can divide by the 100 and you get an actual amount in rupees. So that is how uh, you can call the everything. So I hope uh, you are able to pretty much understand how one-time payment works with the Stripe. And I hope you learn it. If you have any question, any doubt, just comment it out here or email me at, at anchor at nocodetalks.co. Bye-bye. Take care.